Tetanus is an acute, often fatal disease caused by a toxin produced by the bacterium Clostridium tetani. The toxins attack the central nervous system, causing convulsive spasms of the muscles. Symptoms include locked jaw, stiffness of the lower limbs, and contraction of the neck and spine into an arch. These spasms are extremely painful and can cause bone fractures, tendon ruptures, and dislocations. Death often occurs due to respiratory failure or cardiac arrest. In new bones, the infection can enter via the umbilical stump in unhygienic conditions. Poor hygiene has introduced tetanus spores into the umbilical stump. Under conditions of low oxygen as found in a deep puncture wound, the tetanus spores can germinate to produce living tetanus bacteria. The spores also release a toxin called tetanospasmine, which enters the bloodstream. Bacterial numbers increase as they grow and divide. Some bacterial cells develop spores at one end. The bacteria lies, releasing these spores and small tetanospasmine toxin. Bacteria without spores can also lies to release toxin. The toxin enter the bloodstream. Normally, movement is enabled by skeletal muscles, and skeletal muscles are controlled by motor neurons. An electrical message is sent down the axon of a motor neuron and arrives at the terminal buds. Chemical neurotransmitters are released, which binds to muscle fibers, causing them to contract. Shortly after, the neurotransmitters are released from the muscle fibers, allowing them to relax. Repetition of this process tells the muscle fibers to contract and relax as required. If a neonate is infected with tetanus, the tetanus spasmine toxin can reach motor neurons via the bloodstream. The toxins enters the motor neurons via the terminal buds. The toxin then travels up the axon towards the neuron cell body which is found in the spinal cord. After 2 to 14 days, the toxin reaches the motor neuron cell body in the spinal cord. We will now zoom into the spinal cord tissue. Normally, in the spinal cords, the motor neurons are controlled by inhibitory interneurons. These interneurons prevent the motor neurons from constantly firing. Tetanospasmine toxins arriving in the motor neuron cell body interfere with the action of the inhibitory interneurons. To see how the toxin exerts its effects, we will zoom in a synapse between a motor neuron and an inhibitory interneuron. The interneurons release inhibitory neurotransmitters into the synaptic junction. This prevents the firing of motor neurons so that the muscle fibers they control do not constantly contract. Now, tetanospasmine toxin moves out of the motor neuron across the synapse into the inhibitory interneuron. The toxin prevents the release of inhibitory neurotransmitters from the interneuron. The interneuron can no longer control the motor neuron, so the motor neuron fires constantly. Here we see many motor neurons have lost their inhibitory control and are constantly firing. This leads to continued release of neurotransmitters from the motor neuron terminal buds which cause the muscle fibers to contract repeatedly until spasm occurs. The end result is the severe muscle spasm typical of tetanus.